Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. We've known horse logger Taylor Johnson for many years. He's been a regular contributor to the magazine with stories about using his horses to do more than just logging. He makes it a point to talk about how, if someone wants to make a living with their team in the woods, they should consider doing a variety of jobs in addition to cutting down and skidding out trees. That said, when we stopped by last year, Taylor was working a logging job near Hayward, Wisconsin with his son, Sully. He first goes into the woods to fell, limb, and buck some logs before bringing his horses out to skid them to the landing. We started our visit by looking over his logging truck. Yeah, that's my, uh, those are my mares. That's uh, Phoebe and Fiona on the other side. See, I got these wooden poles. Yeah. So I can separate. I can make separations for them. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. You know, I could haul, if I wanted to push it, I could probably haul five of these in here. Right. Yep. Right. You know. Right. Right next to each other. Yeah. Are they in full? I don't know for sure. Okay. Maybe. Cool. Fingers crossed. Yeah. But yeah, man, this is my... This is my truck I set up for working horses, and uh, I got enough room in here I can haul full four sets of harness, full size in my for my fjords both. And I got kind of some extras of stuff, some single lines and some team lines, you know, from running singles, extra heel chains, and then I got all kinds of tools up here that I need extra to repair things like clevises, um, battery chargers. I have a, uh, a uh, generator down here to run grinders. My, I have a small air compressor if I need it. Hand drills. Because a lot of the stuff, you know, like if I break a pole in the woods, I have enough saws. I have stuff to fix. Yep. Make a new one. Make a new one. I don't have to go to town. Right. And uh, extra saw parts, because a lot of times where I'm working up here, I'm 30 miles from a, a shop, shop, store, you know, yeah. so it ruined the whole day if you have to stop. And then you know, a lot of times you're working remote. I have a huge winch there. Oh, yeah. That wow. I can hook the front or back of my truck. Yeah. To pull me out. Right. And that's a lifesaver. I as well. bet. Yeah. I think it's a little messy. It's a half a day a week just to try to keep it clean. Squared away. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then, you know, I keep a pole saw like this with me because up here you get, you know, like from this time of year on, I mean, we could get 16 inches of snow tonight and it wouldn't be that big a deal. Well, every time that happens, you have branches and trees hanging over the road. Well, if I have a log truck coming, I got to get it cleared, you know, so they can get in. So I keep a pole saw right with me all the time. Got the team there. Got the girls with. This truck was originally uh, just a delivery truck? Or? It was a U-Haul truck. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, and then I built this uh, on the inside. I didn't build it. My neighbor built it. Yeah. Uh, my neighbor, John, he built it, and it was... Uh, so it's all framed up on the inside. It's all framed up. So this is just sets Reinforced. In yeah, okay. And they don't really touch the walls or anything. Right. And it's really worked out good. I wish I would have built this thing years ago. Yeah, it's You know, nice. and I got my single shafts up here. So I can take this truck, hook my dump trailer to it with my little tractor in the back of it, have a team in here, my tractor, dump trailer, everything. One, one trip I'm at the job, and I don't technically wouldn't have to leave all week if I didn't want to. Yep. If I threw tent in, a tent in here. Right. Know? Right. Yep. So, and I, you know, I got it wired for lights. The ceiling is insulated. Oh, that's nice. And so when I put them in here in the winter after we've worked and they're hot. Yeah, they heat it up pretty they good. They heat it up pretty good. 
and by the time we get home they're dry i mean because it's just the right temperature and in the summer if i park it in the shade and i open the windows up and i have a fan i put it keeps it that so cool in here compared cool, to a normal cool. steel yeah. horse trailer stock trailer right right yeah that insulation is nice and another thing like up here again like like last winter it snowed every day it seemed like almost every day it snowed a little bit so you're working and all of a sudden two o'clock it starts snowing then you're driving home on slippery roads and if you have a trailer on you got to be so much more careful just you know because it's pushing you in right 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 and with this i can actually make better time than with my four-wheel drive pickup pulling a stock trailer it handles better and it breaks better and the horses don't seem to be you know it's a lot more steady right it's not articulated you it's don't have something that's trying to catch up to you all the time yeah and the horses just relax in here a lot more sure and i can haul four fjords if i wanted to i can easily haul two of these and if i bring a, one belgian with but generally this is what i have this is my main work team and uh they're very comfortable in here if we're going to have a day when i'm cutting and i don't know if i need them or not i'll bring them to the job and i have these poles I can set it up across the back and just let them loose and they can mill around it here and do whatever they want. Sure. We'll go out here and look things over, see where I'm gonna start up here. I already sharpened my saw and got it gassed up for, I usually try to do that at night. Right. So that is the first thing I have to do. Yeah, right. So whose timber are you harvesting? This is a private landowner and they, uh, they're both retired Marines huh. and I've, they've had my card for years and years, they said, and they just decided to call me. They wanted to do something. And, uh, <clears throat> if you can see, it's really heavy to pine and mostly red and they kind of want to manage it for hardwoods and it's really hard for anything else to grow right. when there's this much red pine. Right. But they got some, look at some of this white pine. It's just massive old stuff. Yeah. So we can take some white if I want, but I'd rather, white pine is what's native here. And uh, it does better. Uh -huh. And it, it does better with the native hardwoods we have, like the maples and the oak. So I'm gonna try to leave as much of it as I can and just take red. But like here we had, it was either storm or snow damage. There was already some wood down. Uh -huh. So right. I, see it. I took some, I fell a lot of trees right in this hole cause there was already damage. And the same thing here. Right. And that's what I try to do. I tried to find a spot there's already some, cause when you fall this big a tree, they're gonna tear something up. But like I got a few cut around that maple and now it can start re regenerating more maple. Yeah, right, right. And it don't look like it, but there's a lot of young ones in here. Yeah, and they got room now. They got room. They got sunlight. And now this will hold deer again. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, before right. it wouldn't hold, you know, this open old, there's nothing for them here. Right. Nothing for them to eat. Right. Now, now it'll hold, by next year it'll hold deer again, next summer. So see here I'll have to make a decision. I got young hardwood here. There's some more down here. One there. I gotta take, I'd like to take some of these close and get this canopy opened up. You know? Yeah. And but I'll have some of it I'll have to make the decision which way I want to go with it. Because I might take it that way, you know? Right. Instead of down the hill, we'll just see. See which way the wind's blowing and where I think I can put them. So he's not marking them ahead of time, you're just picking them. Yeah, I'm just picking them and so going. They're letting you use your judgment. Yeah, yeah. And then Because you know, most standard forest practice right now, they would come in here and this would be one of the final cuts of red pine. They would okay. just take. And they'd take all of it. They'd take most of it, yeah. yeah. And then what happens then you take too much and it opens it up so much then you get things like aspen and that coming back real heavy right. and there are some I'm, i might take some aspen in here 
But whenever I see a big one or they're almost dead, I'm leaving them because then we're not triggering that regeneration, that stump regen. You know, let them die out. Let some of these other ones get a foothold before, because they will start gotcha. going. Gotcha. But let these maples get a little jump and let the oak get a little jump. But we'll knock some of the, we'll get some of this brush cleared out here so I can get it into them and start following them. But I mean, look at how beautiful this country is. You know, oh, yeah. that's what's kind of unique about Hayward. We're not far outside of town. Right. But there's, you don't have to go far and you're in wilderness. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of woods here. Right. I normally don't hang in there like that, but I wanted to nip that off a little bit because I wanted it to roll. Because see that tree it rolled out of? Right, right. So that's exactly Maple. what I wanted it to do. Right. And it was a fairly safe tree to do that with. You released it here a little bit towards the end there yeah, just to make just sure it went it. that direction so it turned. Just so it rolled once. Yep. It was already going where it needed to go. It just needed to roll. Gotcha. Now the mill here is wanting tens more than eight. So I'm, I tried to concentrate on tens, but I got to look at these logs and make sure they're straight. So sometimes I might cut a chunk that big out of the middle just to make sure they're straight, you know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. Fieldwork has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. We could keep cutting down the line, but I think I'll clean this up. And then if we have to cut more, we, we will. Perfect. Now it looks like there's plenty of skids here. Yeah.
My phone, my phone rings all the time too. There's always somebody. I guess that's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'll go get her brushed out just a little bit for the shower. Sure. You make this cart? Uh, a friend of mine made it. You design it, I mean? Um, it's a Barden cart. Is it? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's like the one that's Carl Russell. Yep, right, right. Yep. Use. Right. And, uh, I always liked his. I liked how it operated, you know. The only thing I couldn't figure out is how it held together, and I still don't know. Okay. Because look at this. Right. Everything's pulling on here. Right. Right, why doesn't that bend? Why don't that break off? Yeah, those welds break, yeah. And I asked him, and he said, I've used mine for over 20 years, and and he skid some big timber too, you know? Right, right, you asked Carl this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. And, huh. but I like the side entrance. Right, it's and easy I like on. for these smaller horses, it works really good. And I can load this myself, you know? Into the my trailer. bigger cart, it was miserable. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And, uh... I, a friend of mine, Jeremy, uh, built it. He built two of them. And we bought the plans and he built the cart. And he said, beat it up. He goes, I want to I want to see if it'll hold together. So I, I had a great big team back then. They weighed about a ton of piece. And I was getting huge white pine. And the biggest white pine I skidded with this cart scaling it going by what it should weigh by the scale it was 8600 pounds and i just saw it's it, this is where i ripped the front of it off and it looked like it was bending kind of but flexing maybe it yeah. held together and i to the, the life of me i can't understand how it holds together so you can offset it and are these for shafts yep wow. so I can go nice. single nice so i have you know the shafts in there yep so sometimes when I, in the winter time, like when I get farther back here, I'm going to be doing more single skidding and it's just a little quicker. Oh yeah. 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 And you know, I'll bring it right up to the sled and I'll load the sled with the tractor and then I'll give the horses a break, pull it out, you know, a big load on my sled with the tractor and unload it and come back and just keep doing, you know, that'll be my cycle there.
you have different tones of voice uh -huh. and those are giving them messages. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, well, I just, uh, some of it is literally what's going on. You know, I might get a little louder and there's brush slapping and things going on. They got to be able to hear me. And then if there's, you know, if I ever get real loud, it's I'm seeing something they're not seeing. And I, I don't want them to get hurt, but most of the time I'm literally almost at a whisper. I mean, I'm barely saying anything. And you see how, I, like in the lines, you just barely got to touch these guys. And these, these are just rubber bits. Right. And they, they don't need a lot. They respond very well. I mean, actually, the your hands and your voice are kind of similar. It doesn't take much. Yeah. And they respond to it. Yeah. When and, um. You've got a command for when they have turned enough and you want them to go ahead again before you're going to turn them back up again. It's right there. Yeah. I see it right there. And that yeah. just means that I want them to step forward right there. Yeah. And uh, and that just, that's what I tell them when I want them, you know, I'm saying G, 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 right there. And they'll go just a step or two and stop. And that I'm trying to maneuver around a stump or something. They right. know we're going to back up. They know we're going to a log. So they will, they, uh, they know it's time to stop and they're not supposed to just go forward. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.